Hi guys, it's Vana, the Twisted Stitcher, and today we're going to talk all about sewing machines. I have gotten several comments on my videos or actual emails sent to me from several of you that state all the same thing. I hate my sewing machine, or I'm afraid of my sewing machine, or I don't know how to use my sewing machine. Well, I want to change that. It is my goal to help you feel comfortable with your sewing machine. I have several different kinds of sewing machines in my possession here in the cave, and I wanna to talk to you about what the different aspects of different models are, and I will slowly do little, you know, short videos on how to thread your machine, and et cetera, et cetera. So, let's get started learning about the different kinds of sewing machines. Here we are at my first sewing machine. It is a Juki 2010Q. This is a straight stitch only machine, meaning it only goes forward and backward. It does not do a zigzag or a buttonhole at all, just forward and backward. This is a oscillating hook machine, which means the bobbin is not a drop-in bobbin from the front, it is loaded from the side. I'll show you more about that after I go through a couple other features that it has. This is a standard machine, meaning that it is not computerized, and you determine the stitch, width, uh, stitch length by turning this dial. A typical stitch length standard is 2.5, around 2.5. It does have scissors. Scissors is fantastic. That means when you're sewing, you press this and it automatically cuts the bobbin thread and the top thread. Fantastic, it's a fantastic feature, especially when you're sewing very fast. Um, you can hit that and you don't have to stop and pull it or snip it yourself. You just press scissors and it's over with. It does have a speed governor. If you have it up to the rabbit, of course, that means you're going very fast. If you have it down on the turtle, that means you're going very slow. If you're an experienced sewer, you probably go about medium. And when you're just doing general sewing or general piecing, and that's all the faster that you need to go. Um, if you're going to do free motion quilting, of course, you want to be up to the rabbit because that means that the needle is going very fast. This machine is particularly great for free motion um, quilting, and it's also very great for piecing a quilt. This is almost like an industrial machine in that it is a very strong machine, very made very well, all steel on the outside and all steel on the inside. All of the machines that we will see today that I'm going to talk about and what that I own are always all steel on the inside. And at the end, we'll discuss why that is important. It does have a needle up and down that raised the needle and that put the needle down. It will stay down until I tell it to go back up, which is a really great feature for when you want to turn corners. You just, you don't have to turn the, the hand wheel at all, you put it down and it stays down until I tell it to go back up. This is the reverse button and this drops your feed dogs, which are, the feed dogs are, pulls the fabric through the machine. There they are up. That's an important thing that people don't realize. When people drop their feed dog, they're expecting to see the feed dogs come back up and they don't come back up until you turn the hand wheel or you begin sewing. A lot of people call the shop that I work at asking or saying, my, my machine is broken because my feed dogs don't come back up. I put them down and they won't come back up. That's because you have to start sewing or turn the hand wheel, okay? All right, so. Again, this is a standard machine. Um, you thread it, you have to thread it yourself through the tension discs and through the, the thread arm down to the needle. Very standard, very hard working machine. Like I said, almost industrial um, as far as how many thickness, thickness, how thick of a, a materials it goes through. A really, a really very solid machine. Let's talk about extension tables. 
This machine comes with an extension table and all that does, as you can see, is give you more surface area to work on. I highly recommend extension tables. This one came with the machine, but when we see my next machine, I'll show you the uh, table that you can order from a company called So Steady that makes them, um, you tell your, so, your sewing center what type of machine you have, they call So Steady and they will cut the acrylic table to exactly fit your machine, any machine. So um, if you really like to sew and you don't have like a sewing cabinet to put your machine on, which will make the, the frame of the machine, the bed of the machine uh, flat like this, you can buy extension tables and they are fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna take my extension table off and I'm going to turn my machine around so that you can see it here because I want to get down here in the hook of the machine and so that you can see the bobbin. Okay, so let me arrange the right there. Okay, here's the bobbin case. To get the, machine, the bobbin out, I'm going to open this little tab. See, there it is closed. Here it is open. And that allows you to pull out your bobbin case. Here's the bobbin case. There's the little tab that you close and that will lock it in the machine. This is how you get it out. You pull it out, you open that tab. Inside we put the bobbin, okay? When you put your bobbin in, you have to manually thread it yourself by going through that little slit in the bobbin case, pulling it forward to right there. And that means that your bobbin is loaded, the thread is loaded and ready to go. Then to put this back into the machine, you line it up with the little, there's a little Place where the, the bobbin, there's like a little arm, a little place that the bobbin goes in. You push, push it in there, you, you put it in there and then snap it in and there your bobbin is loaded. If you don't hear that snap, that means you haven't loaded your bobbin right. All right, so there is the Juki 2010Q, a great machine, a great machine for quilters. If you only want a straight stitch and go forward and reverse, it's a fantastic machine. If you are looking for a machine that will zigzag and maybe do a few decorative stitches, this is not the machine for you, but um, an excellent machine, an excellent choice for quilters especially. All right, let's go to the next machine. Here we are at my second machine. This is my Janome Magnolia 7330. I love this machine. This is the machine that appears in all of my finishing videos. It was my very first machine. This machine is 15 years old. It's a fantastic machine. It's as good as the day that I purchased it. It runs as good as the day I purchased it. I love this machine. It's a very simple machine. There's not that many stitches, but it has more than what the one that I showed you, you know, the Juki. It has um, buttonholes, it has a few decorative stitches, it has a buttonhole stitch, um, it has the feather stitch, and then the asterisk little like snow stitch. These are elastic stitches. This is your zigzag, and then these of course are your straight stitches. This is about all that you would need if you wanted to begin sewing. You wouldn't need much more than these. They're no longer making this model. I think I mentioned that. They're no longer making this model. And um, I think the one that would be, in my estimation, comparable to this model would be the Janome 3160 QDC. It has a few enhancements on it over this model, particularly what it has is scissors. And we'll talk about scissors on the next machine that I show you. But um, that's an upgrade from this from this, that's a feature, an upgrade feature on a machine. Probably means nothing to several of you, but it is a feature that is, is very nice. Anyways, I love this machine. I have two of these, two of these exact same models. Fantastic machine. 
I'm going to turn it on just so that you can see some of the features. This is an entry-level computerized machine. Don't freak out about computerized. All that means is it has a motherboard in it. And all of the stitches are preloaded to the standardized stitch width and stitch length that is, you know, standard for sewing. That doesn't mean you can't change them. You, can't cha you can change them. So this number up here, that means that's what stitch you're on. That's number 01 right here, which is just your general straight stitch, okay? When I go here, that's stitch width. Really doesn't matter for a straight stitch what your stitch width is. It doesn't really matter. It's the same. You just leave it that one go. But let's say this is the stitch length. So that means how long is your stitch as you sew along. Let's say you want a big you know, a big long stitch. Like let's say you're gonna sew a quilt and you are straight ditch stitching. You want straight, you know, straight seam, ditch stitch in the ditch stitching, and you want a, a longer a longer stitch. Or you're going through very thick and heavy fabric and you don't want a real tight stitch, which is what 2.2 would be. 2.2 to about 2.6 is your standard stitch length for you know general sewing. But if you want to make that longer, just with the pu push of the plus sign button, you can make it longer up to about five. Yeah, it won't go any higher than five. All right. You want to go take that back down, you just go back down to 2.2. That's how it works. Very simple. Very simple machine. Most most models, no matter what the model is, and it's entry level, entry level machines, that's how it works. You choose your stitch by the plus or minus and you choose your stitch width and your stitch length, okay? All right, so let's go on to <clears throat> what is nice about this machine and what is different. This machine has a drop-in bobbin or a top-loading bobbin. Whoops, sorry. Okay, you can see that right there. Let me see if I can turn on the lights. Okay, all right. So here is the top, the top loading bobbin. This means that it is a horizontal hook. So instead of in the one in the Juki, the hook went around and around like this. In a drop-in bobbin, it's a horizontal hook, so it goes around, around and around and around this way, okay? So a top loading bobbin, very easy. There's usually a little slide button that pops open the, the bobbin case lid and the bobbin fits right down like that, drop it in. Basically you thread it underneath the little tension disc there, put the, the cap back on, the bobbin access hatch lid back on, you're ready to go sewing. Simple as that. Okay, so let's talk about one other thing that you might want to look for in a, in a general sewing machine. I'm going to take you back a little bit. Okay, this right here is the speed governor. That means you can go really fast if you have it on the three arrows, or if there's sometimes a rabbit. If, it, if there's a rabbit here, that means you're going to go really fast, and then there would be a turtle down here or just one arrow, and that means you're going to go slow. You want it on... The little, you don't want to go like a speed demon when you first start sewing. You want to be slow. It doesn't matter how hard you push on the pedal. If you have this speed governor on the one arrow or turtle, it's going to be very slow. If you have, no matter how hard you push on the pedal, if you have it all three arrows or on the rabbit, it's going to go very fast. You don't want to do that if you're starting out. That's what causes issues. That's what causes fear and problems of being hurt is if you get on your sewing machine and it doesn't have a speed governor and you start like going 70 miles an hour. Bad choice. So um, choosing a machine that has a speed governor is very important in my mind because you don't have to like think about how hard I'm pushing on the pedal. You can put that thing all the way down to the floor and it doesn't matter. So 
this machine is a fantastic machine, entry level machine. So on a entry level machine, you wanna look for a machine that has very few stitches. I think that it's best to have a machine that's an entry level computer such as this one um, because you don't have to deal with all the dials and things like that. Like on the Juki, you had to deal with them um, some, when you thread it, there's some tension discs and stuff like this, like that, I'm sorry, that um, you have to deal with. This is very easy. These machines set up like this, very easy to run. Um, just, I like I said, I taught myself how to sew on this machine and I was, I was afraid of, I'll be, I'll be honest, I was afraid of, of sewing, didn't know the first thing about sewing, but I was motivated in the way that I wanted to finish my own cross stitching. And so I was motivated to learn and I went out there, bought this machine and, and learned. So a little machine like this, I love this guy. I love him. Okay, on to the next machine. Here we are at my Baby Lock, Baby Lock Unity. It is a higher end machine. It's not the highest machine that they make, but it is a higher end machine. This is an embroidery and sewing machine. Now then, it's a combo machine. I'm not gonna talk about the embroidery part because we're not interested in that. And if there are people that are interested in, in embroidery, machine embroidery, single needle machines, we can talk about that at a different time, but we're just gonna talk about just today, standard bells and whistles, standard options on a machine. So let me turn Eunice on here. I name all my machines. Okay, Eunice gets a little mouthy when she first wakes up. Okay, so we're not gonna talk about the embroidery, so I'm just gonna go straight to utility and decorative stitches. Now then, what makes this a high-end machine? Well, it's compute basically fully computerized. You can see it has a touch screen here. Um, this machine comes with hundreds of stitches, hundreds and hundreds of stitches. Um, this is just the utility stitches, which means just basic sewing stitches. It always comes up on just the straight stitch. I could go to, you know, pages, pages and pages of decorative stitches it has. You know, and you can see that, let me pull you a little bit closer. You can see that it has serpentine stitch and the feather stitch and hearts and all kinds of stuff. It also has an embroidery alphabet that if I wanted to do some simple embroidery for the sewing side, um, I have that option here. Okay, let's go back. It also has a free motion, which means, and, it, and, and this is a highly computerized machine and where it says that the needle's gonna be down and I need to change to my darning foot or my free motion foot, my hopping foot, and that it'll be straight stitch. It will automatically drop your feed dogs when I press the free motion. And when I unpress it, it'll move it back up and it'll go back to my, tell me that I need to have this foot on for my straight stitch. <laughs> it's a smart, it's a smart sewing machine. You can do single or twin needle sewing. You can do mirror imaging on this machine, which is very nice. And this machine also has a sensor pin, which means that as I'm sewing, if I'm doing a decorative stitch, I'm sewing along and let's say I want this decorative stitch to end exactly in the cor on the corner and complete the stitch. When I do my sensor pin, it will, all I have to do is take the sensor pin that's connected to the machine, touch, touch where I'm sewing, and then it'll say, the machine will ask, touch where I'm ending, and it will calculate how many stitches from here to wherever the end is that it has to do to end exactly completing the stitch where I want it to, to turn. So, you know, if that's important to you, then that's another thing that you need to think about. 
Now I'm a quilter as well as a cross stitch, cross stitcher, a finisher, all of that. I sew all my own cross stitch stuff, but I also quilt. And one thing that was important to me was to have a laser light. So here is my laser light. You can see I can manipulate that however I want it want to manipul manipulate it. And that allows me to follow that line to get whatever, if I want a scant quarter of an inch, that helps me follow that line to get a scant quarter of an inch. If I want an eighth of an inch or whatever, I can manipulate this laser line in order for me to do whatever I want. Now then, another thing I can do for it, do with it, you can see that there's the laser on my hands. If I want to, I'm doing echo quilting, I can put that laser light wherever I want and then I follow my needle on that light to do like echo quilting. If I'm doing straight line quilting, of course. So, very sophisticated machine. It, I also can manipulate it through the pages to, um, if it will do presser foot height, how high I want my presser foot. It lets me um, do uh, width control is on and off. It, I can fine adjust my, where my, how my foot is laying. I can fine adjust it. Um, oh, there's just so many things that this machine can do. I When I stop, when I'm piecing, I can um, tell it that when I stop, I want the corner of my uh, presser foot to, to shift up so that I can feed the next piece of material through. Um, I would not have started with this machine, but as I began to uh, quilt and I was very comfortable with sewing. I got this machine because of all the options that it had. Would you purchase this right out of this, the shooting box? No, no, I would not purchase this as my very first machine. But it is a great machine and it is also a drop-in bobbin, so it's very easy. It's a self-threading machine. Um, that's e I want to show that. Let me get back to the thing here. So, when I want to thread my machine, I go all the way through and it actually has a robotic arm that will come down and thread the needle through the eye. I don't have to ever thread it. That and that, now I'm gonna tell you that was pretty fantastic. So anyways, this is a very, like I said, a very high, high end, sophisticated machine, but you know, it's worth, it, it shows you all the different options in machines that there are out there on the market. So let's go back to um, talk about what the different machine companies are that are out there nowadays and what your options would be as far as getting a machine if you need to get one. Just a minute. Okay, so you've seen the different types of machines. General things that you need to, to remember or think about when you're purchasing a machine is, do you want an oscillating hook? That's the ones where you load your bobbin case into your bobbin, into the bobbin case, and then load your bobbin case into the machine. The hook goes like this. Generally, older model machines have oscillating hooks. So like treadle machines generally have oscillating hooks. Uh, old Kenmore's or Singers have oscillating hooks. Not a bad thing, fine, but a little bit more difficult to clean, a little more of a hassle, and not quite as easy because you have to thread your thread in that case the correct way and put it into your machine, which sometimes can cause problems, okay? But not a big deal. You can learn it, right? You can learn it. They all come with sewing ma machine manuals. You can learn it. Okay. Then the next thing to think about is drop-in bobbin. Typically, most of the modern machines have drop-in bobbins, okay? So maybe a lot of your thought process will be taken away from that because most machines have drop-in bobbins nowadays because they're easier. I mean, that's just really what it comes down to. Okay. Now then, let's talk about models. 
and some of you will will that are maybe ex at our um, experienced seamstresses or sewers will not agree with what I say and selling machines for three and a half years I can come to tell you that buying a sewing machine is similar to buying a car or drinking a soda or coke <laughs> in Indiana here we call everything coke no matter whether it's Mountain Dew or Sprite or coke it's coke anyways a lot of times people are very brand loyal okay and that's fine that if if you are brand loyal that's good that means that whatever you purchased before really worked well for you and that's what you want right and that's great that's great if it works for you don't change it there's no reason to change it I'm going to just give a general overview of what I've learned from my 15 years of sewing and particularly what I've learned which it's been a lot since I've started selling sewing machines at the quilt shop and I'm their number one salesperson so I have a little bit of knowledge about it okay all right so the number one selling machine in America or really in the world is Bernina B-E-R Ber Ber B E R and then Nina N I N A okay Bernina I don't sell those they are fantastic machines number one selling machine all steel on the inside um, fantastic however very costly they're very costly machines um, their feet for instance one foot like let's say it comes with a standard set of foot feet for your machine right but if you want to get like a cording foot or a ruffling foot or whatever you're going to pay on average about $40 35 to $40 per foot for your machine entry level prices for a very entry level sewing machine I'm talking like 800 to 1200 dollars for an entry level Bernina it'll last a lifetime it truly will so you know it's kind of a jut what what do you want to do you know Bernina fantastic machine number two selling machine in a, in the world is baby lock baby lock another fantastic company has fantastic machines and very affordable machines an entry-level machine for baby lock at my shop is a zest they have a like a opening kind of new sewist type machine line and it goes zest zeal joy jubilant and brilliant there's five five machines there and it goes up in what your um, bells and whistles are on each machine as you go up the line you'll get more bells and whistles and it'll raise in price a little bit but just as an illustration a, I, it's a zest a zest is the lowest machine it basically has a straight stitch a zigzag an oscillating hook mm. and um, it's not computerized it has the dials which I mean that's all it's not any different than the the computer is computerized machines but you know it's dials it's not computerized the first computerized one in the line is the jubilant and it runs around six hundred dollars I think and then the brilliant runs around a thousand dollars at least at our shop there's different prices different you know it's like a car dealer I mean honestly buying a sewing machine from a dealer is like buying a car really honestly it is so anyways the, the most affordable machine in the Baby Lock line is a Zest, and it at my shop runs $184.95. Very affordable, really, if you really think about it, that's affordable. And it's all steel on the inside. It'll last a lifetime. You take care of your machine, it'll take care of you. Okay, so Baby Lock, second selling machine in, in America, in the world. Third selling machine in America, in the world, is Janome. 
Janome is the brand that I started out with. I think that they sell fantastic machines. I think, this is my opinion, okay, Janome machines in the entry levels, much better than the entry levels on Baby Lock. It's an opinion, people, just an opinion. Um, I think that they're more user, the Janome's, the entry level Janome's are much more user friendly than the Baby Lock entry level machines. Not that they're better, I just say they're user friendly. I think that um, most entry level Janome's are computerized. Um, that for means therefore it's a little bit easier to use because you just press buttons and press the pedal down and start sewing. So, you know, that's something to think about. It's something to think about, right? Okay, now then, let's talk about Singer and Brother machines. They have their place, okay? They have their place in, in sewing. Many, many people buy Singer and Brother sewing machines at Walmart or Joann's, okay? Now then, a word about them, okay? Singer was a very reputable name years and years and years and years and years. For years, Singer. For years, Brother. Okay? Not anymore. And I'll tell you why. They're made in China. And the gears, although it looks like it's metal on the outside, everything that you can see when you look at the hook and stuff like that looks like it's, it's metal. And it is metal. But all of the working parts on the inside, particularly the gears, plastic. Brother and Singer sewing machines are made that you purchase. Let me let me qualify this. Singer and Brother sewing machines that you purchase at Joann's or at Walmart are plastic gears. Did you know that Singer and Brother machines don't that you buy at Walmart and Joann's they don't make replacement parts for them, and that means that technicians can't get replacement parts for them. We've, I've actually heard the technician that works at the quilt shop call Singer and Brother and have asked for replacement parts and they say those are made as throwaway machines. Throwaway machines. We're filling up our landfills. We don't, we don't need throwaway machines. You're gonna have, there's gonna be even machines that you see at Joann's and Walmart that will say heavy duty. Can I just say that they can stamp Christy Brinkley on my forehead and that doesn't make me Christy Brinkley. Heavy duty stamped on a machine purchased at Walmart or Joann's doesn't mean that it's heavy duty. Sorry. So, while they have their place and they are affordable and it might let you dip your toe in, in sewing, just know that if they break, if you break, if you go through something very thick, and we've seen this a lot since this pandemic, that people are making masks, right? Well, when you get those side seams on your mask, you're going through several layers of fabric. I cannot begin to tell you how many sewing machines in the Singer and brother categories that have been brought into the shop since this last March that cannot be fixed because the gears are broken, okay? They don't make replacement parts, they, it can't be fixed. Or you have to send it back to Singer and I don't know what happens in that because I've never done that personally, but I know that I've heard a lot of customers say, well, they say, send it back to them. Well, once you pay $40 for shipping to get it back to them, and then you have to pay for them to fix it. And then if they can get parts or they look at it and oftentimes they'll say, we can't fix it. They are made to be thrown away. So, if that's what you have, just know you, it can run a long time. Just don't go through thick, thick, thick areas of sewing. And if you are going through thick, thick areas of sewing, go very slow. Very slow. To get 
through that because you go fast, you're going to break your gears every time. Eventually, it'll break your gears, okay? So, something to think about. Um, I've seen several Singer and Brother sewing machines in Walmart and Joann's go for around $100. Definitely worth $100 if you take care of it. It'll last you a good few years. But, and if you're not going to do that much with it, you know, okay. But for $100, more dollars, you can get an entry-level Janome or Baby Lock that's steel on the inside, and you can run it like a race car over thick places, and it won't break because the gears are metal. So, it's all something to think about, okay? Um, and I'm not, I don't mean to talk down anything, but I think that where you can say, well, this isn't as good as this, I think that I have a viable voice because I've been exposed to it for several years and I work in it. So I feel like I can say, you know, what I can say. Singer and Brother are now made in China and they're not as good. Doesn't last as long as what a Bernina, a Baby Lock, or a Janome will last you. Now, Foff and Husqvarna machines There'll be, they're good machines. They are metal on the inside. Their gears are metal, but they're not made of an alloy, a steel alloy. They're made of what is called pot metal, which is like a, I don't really understand what it's made out of. I think maybe aluminum and something else. I don't know. Don't, don't quote me on that. But I just heard the technician say that, you know, Foff, Viking, and Husqvarna machines now are made with a lower quality, let's say a lower quality metal than a full steel metal machine. It's still a good machine. If that's what you have, don't, you know, that's great. It's not, you take care of your machine. That's what I always tell people. You take care of your machine and your machine will take care of you. So, you know, again, that's a, those are very popular, you know, machines to have and, you know, they're fine. They're fine machines. Um, another brand of machine that you might see, it's an older brand, is Necky, N-E-C-C-H-I, Necky machines. Those are now under the um, umbrella of Janome. Um, I don't think that they make them anymore, but they're an older machine. Very good. If you have one of those, great. They're awesome machines. Another machine that is under the Janome umbrella, the Janome company umbrella, is Elma, E-L-N-A. Another great machine, fantastic. Uh, it's a, basically a Janome machine, so good. Um, let's see, what else? Another, a lot of machines that come in are um, Singer Stylists. Those were very um, popular in the 60s and 70s. Um, that's when Singer was still made in, in America and in England and in, and in Canada, uh, all solid on the inside easily to fix if a lot of times I see or the technician sees that the the gears are broken but after like 60 years 40 50 years you know okay you can understand that um, the gears can still be purchased and and replaced a lot of times the technician will have he has like thousands of machines in a warehouse and he goes pulls parts from them so they can be fixed a lot of times so stylus if your grandma or you or your mom or whoever has a stylus machine definitely worth saving def as long as it's not locked up you know it's definitely worth you know saving treadle machines are definitely worth saving again those were whites uh, let's see white machines uh singer machines there's others that are treadle machines, very viable machine to, to still, you know, take care of and use because they're all mechanical. There's nothing that really can go wrong except the actual treadle leather that you might have to trade. Uh, Singer Featherweight is very unpopular among quilters. It's a straight stitch only machine. So, you know, that that's one drawback if you want to like zigzag your edges or whatever, but you can still find those, still a very valuable machine. It's a collector machine. Um, so that basically goes through a lot of variety of what your machines are. All I can tell you is research your machine, what's on the inside, where it's made, how easy are the parts to get. I basically have gone over that here so you'll know 
you know, what it is. And can I just say that going to a quilt shop or a sewing center that is a dealer of Bernina, Baby Lock, or Janome is not bad. It's not like they're going to go in there and like talk of, you know, talk your silver tongued talk into you buying a thousand dollar machine. I don't when people come in. I ask them what they want and then I try to set them, place them with what machine that I think would be best for them. So buying from a dealer is always better than just buying blindly. And I'll tell you why. There's trained people there that can help you if you don't know how to run something or if you take it home and you don't understand something. There's people there that can help you, okay? Second of all, you're going to have warranty information, and if something goes wrong with your machine, it'll be under warranty for however long that you know, the company deems a certain machine, and you'll have support there. Warranty work can be done at a dealer. Thirdly, is is that a machine is a mechanical object. And like a car or anything else mechanical, you have to take care of it. How many times have I said you take care of your machine and your machine will take care of you? Well, that includes yearly maintenance. If you sew a lot with your machine, then your machine will need yearly maintenance. If you just sew every now and then, like once every other month or once quarterly, then your machine won't need maintenance every year, but it'll need it at least every other year because your machine is a mechanical object. It's a mechanical thing. And, you, and all mechanical things need to have maintenance done on it. So that generally points out what the beginning process of a sewing machine getting a sewing machine, what you think about a machine, what you need to think about when you're buying a machine, what is important to you, what is, and you need to think about this, what is the important things that you think that you will need in a sewing machine, and you have that with you when you go to purchase a sewing machine, and then you stay on track, okay? So all of those things, will get you what you need in a sewing machine. I hope that you have found this helpful. And I will have other videos like how to thread your machine. That's the number one thing that people need to know. How do you thread your sewing machine and how to do it correctly? Because there's a lot of experienced seat sewers that don't know how to thread their machine properly. Believe me, I know. So, until we get to the next part of this series, I hope you enjoyed this. Think about your sewing machine. If you have a sewing machine, make sure you take care of it. You do the general maintenance on it. You keep it clean, oiled, if, you're, if your machine is the one kind that takes oil, where you have to add it manually. See, like Janome's and Baby Locks, they have a self-sealing oiling system, so it's a wicking system that wicks oil oil itself. You don't have to add it, okay? So that's why you have to take it to the the maintenance guy every other, at least every other year. I take mine every year. Most people that sew a lot should always, should always, always take theirs every year. Doesn't happen. Believe me, I know. But anyways, so I hope that this helped you. Think about machines. Think about your machine if you have one, or think about what you want in a machine. We're going to get you sewing, people. I want you to learn how to sew. And I think that once you learn how to sew, you'll be so happy that you did. All right. Until the next time, see you later. Bye-bye.